All right, so we're gonna drag these things about a mile down this uh, sandy gravel road here. I'm back at this golf cart and check them on the other side. This is gonna pain me. Sorry, guys. It's gotta be done. We love you. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Here we are, back at the rickety table, which means, you guessed it, another knife torture test. So featured in today's video is an iconic knife, a knife that has captured the imagination of men and young men in the United States of America for decades now. It is the USMC K-Bar fighting knife. And I've been wanting to get my hands on this knife for quite a while. I've, I mean, since I was 12 or 13 years old, and I remember watching a movie, 1957 film entitled Heaven Knows Mr. Allison. This knife has captured my imagination. I've been obsessed with owning one of these knives. However, we got a problem. This knife is fake. This is not a real K-Bar knife. That's right, this knife is made in China. China, 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 China. China. So here's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna pit this knife against this knife. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is the real deal. This is the real K-Bar, made in Olean, New, New York. And as you can see, the box is very similar, very similar in style. But let's go ahead and open these up and let's kind of compare them here on the rickety table and see what they look like side by side. Now, in my left hand, I'm holding the real deal. The bona fide. He's bona fide. What are you? K-Bar fighting knife. In my right hand, I'm holding our United Cutlery made in China version of the K-Bar. Now, if you take a look at the sheaths here, they're almost identical in style. They even have the eagle globe and anchor. Who is that private pile? Emblem embrosed on them, but you can tell right away that one's quality far surpasses the others. So what I wanted to do was kind of pit these two knives against each other and see which one will hold up a little bit better. What do you guys think? Go ahead and put it in the comments below. I'm gonna put these things through the ringer. Without further ado, let's kick things off. <laughs> Would you look in there? We got two USMC K-Bar fighting knives. Except one of y'all's a fake. And you about to tell me, which one? Which one of y'all fake? One of you has a 420 stainless steel blade made somewhere in a factory in rural China. The other one, it's got a 1095 Crovan steel made in Olean, New York. One of y'all's got a rat tail tang running the full length of the handle. The other one, it's simply stamped on the back of the handle to make it look like you got a rat tail tang. And I'm about to find out which one of y'all's fake. Oh, you don't want to talk, huh? Mmm. Ain't nobody want to talk till the Dremel comes out. That's right. That's right. Gabe! Gabe! Dinner's ready. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right up. So we're gonna, before we torture these things anymore, we're gonna go ahead and try to cut through some paper real quick. Um, Zach here is going to... Let's see, is that the real one or the fake one? This is the, uh, this is the real deal. This is the, um, the real K-Bar. So I'm gonna take and hold this and let's just try to slice through. Come up, come a little closer, real fast. Just, just come on, zoom in on the paper here. Oh, we did more tearing than we did cutting. Here, do more like a sawing. There we go. Cool. Let's do right here. Nice. Do a couple more with that one. Yeah, that one's definitely got a nice edge on it. All right. Uh, here, zoom in on my arm, and let's go ahead and try. On my arm here here oh yeah it's taking it off you can see it right there that thing's got a nice edge on it you can see all that 
All right, so let's switch over to the fake one. Hold that before I pass it off to Miller. All right, this is the fake one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's it's cutting it, but it's, you can feel it's a lot more forced. I'll try right here. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, it's getting through it okay. Um, but it's it's definitely more forced. All right, let's try a, um, let's try a shaving now. You see that okay? No, it's not, it's not doing anything. So yeah, I mean, you can just feel the edge on this is far more subpar than, than the real deal. All right, you guys ready to drag them down the road? Yeah. The ends of these handles, this is the fake one, fake K-bar. All right, here's the real one. Hold that one for me for a second. All right, so we're gonna drag these things about a mile down this uh, sandy gravel road here on the back of this golf cart and check them on the other side. So this is gonna pain me because they're gonna look totally different at the end of this mile. Sorry guys, it's gotta be done. Love you. Okay, so here is, let's go over the the real one here. You can see there's some nicks on the blade, to be expected. Um, even the blade has some little nicks in it. The uh, hand, hand guard here is twisted up a little bit. The leather looks like it's pretty abrased, obviously from all that, it's basically driving down a strip of, giant strip of sandpaper for a mile and a half. And then, um, yeah, it's just, it's got a lot of surface. Let's see if it's got any flex to it. Now it being a full rat tail tang, it's not gonna have a lot of flex to it or anything. It's not gonna jiggle. Um, let's look at the other one. This is United Cutlery. Same thing, a lot of nicks on the blade. Looks like it just got sanded down on the leather handle. Nothing too extreme. Let's see, same thing down here. It's worn down pretty good. Looks like there is a little little gap that's forming there. Um, there is a bit of flex in the handle now, as before there wasn't. And you can also begin to see there's a little bit of a gap there between the blade and the hand guard that was not there as well. So things just kind of got loosened up a little bit. You can hear it kind of flex a little bit too. So, all right, I think uh, so far our real K-Bar is winning the race. It is showing its true colors. It's got a lot of surface distress, but functionally it's still, it's still got an edge. It's still a strong knife. It can be used as a knife. But this one's, the United Cutlery is starting to show the, show the aging already. All right, so one of the tests we put all of our knives through is battening down some wood and getting some firewood. So we've got some nice dry oak here. We're gonna put our real K-bar through and then our K-bar through next. But before I do, I wanna say, give a shout out to a couple people. Um, uh, Sherry G, she's always a faithful watcher. She comments, always offers lots of feedback. So hope you're doing well. And uh, Jep Fo, um, hope you're doing well as well. You guys are always faithful uh, watchers and comment and ask me questions, so I appreciate it. I also wanna give a couple uh, shout outs to some uh, recent patrons over on our Patreon page, and that is Gene and Joan. Thank you guys for joining our pa Patreon. All right, you ready? Let's see if this thing will. Now this is very destructive for a knife, potentially destructive for a knife if if it's a if it's a poor quality knife because um, this is a lot of a lot of things happening here. You got a lot of concussion coming down on top of your blade, which sends a lot of vibrations into the handle, and also you're just hitting the back of the blade, the, the blunted edge of the blade here really hard so it can actually do damage if it's soft or steel to the back of the blade. But let's see how our real K-Bar holds up. All 
All right. Looks like it's um, suffered very little damage on the back of the blade. There's no movement, no give. Let's feather off a little bit of um of our oak here. See how she does. And this is after it being dragged down the road for about a mile and a half or so. You getting that okay? Is it peeling off good? Get these long feather strips like this. Good. Now we're gonna try feathering off some of this um, pine lighter wood here with our real K-bar. See how it does here. Lighter wood, or sometimes called fat wood, is wood that I usually found in the pine tree and the sap has accumulated in the center of the pine tree in the core of the trunk after the pine tree has died. This is great for fire starting material. All right, now we're gonna um, split some firewood with the giant version. Here we go. It's the same piece of oak, nothing different. That actually did a little bit better than the real thing, but it might have been user error too. So let's try to go right to the middle with the with the fake one here. So a bit of history about the K-Bar knife. You may not realize that in 1923, the Union Cutlery Company trademarked the K-Bar name. But there's a bit of legend or maybe clever marketing behind the origin of the name. The most popular story is that the company received a letter from a fur trapper that claimed to have killed a bear with one of their knives. And the letter was said to be hard to read from the damage. And the only letters readable in the kill a bear phrase were K-A-Bar. And soon after receiving the letter, the Union Cutlery started stamping some of their knives with the K-Bar name. And these were on switchblade knives called the Grizzly and Baby Grizzly, which are a far cry from the famed World War II era knife we all know and love and are familiar with. Now, as you can see with this demonstration, the United Cutlery brand K-Bar just really lacks the edge that the real Olean New York version of the K-Bar came with in the box and I didn't put any additional edges on either of these but you can see this one's having a little bit harder time pulling some shavings off of this oak and off of this fat lighter wood now one of the things people don't realize is one of the most destructive things you can do to a knife is throwing it into a tree just like I'm doing in this segment of the video I made it a point to throw each of these knives into the tree several times. And one of the last throws I had with the United Cutlery knife here in the video, the non-lethal pummel actually pops off of the handle. And it was simply glued onto the handle. But let me show you a close-up here in the video. <laughs> it's just glued on there. This is going to kind of end up being the death knell of this knife, if you will. From this point forward, this knife just does not perform the same because you're gonna see the leather stacking just continues to slip off of the, the handle at this point. So now it's time to throw the real K-Bar. The real K-Bar, as I begin to throw it, I realize right away the weight is completely different and the balance is different on this knife. It's just a heavier knife. We're gonna try both here. <laughs> So you notice I even lost the, the back cap here and the with the China? version the uh, rubber stacking is actually starting to come off after just throwing it here. But our real K bar <clears throat> is actually held up flawlessly. There is no shaking, no movement. Whereas this one said that's all coming apart this is loose
If you've watched any of my prior torture tests, one of the things I like to do is to drive over knives with my 2002 Toyota 4Runner. And I drive over my knives multiple times here on the rocky uh, driveway, but also on the concrete driveway. And as you can see, the real K-Bar hasn't really been affected whatsoever by my car driving over it twice so far. It just kind of, you know, crushed down into the stone a little bit. But the handle itself wasn't, wasn't manipulated or flattened. Now, you'll notice on the United Cutlery version, the handle has already experienced a little bit of flattening. If you look on the right-hand side of the handle, you'll know it's a little bit flatter on the left-hand side. And also, as this began to crush some of the leather stacking, it forced some of the leather stacking. It just kind of loosened it up more. And we'll see later how that kind of comes into play and continues to create more and more problem for me. So this is me driving over these knives on top of some concrete just to make sure that, you know, they're getting some good solid abuse here under my car. Now, ever since the United Cutlery version on the right-hand side lost its pummel on the back of the handle, the leather stacking just continued to get more and more loose and there was nothing really to hold it in place. And the handle just continued to get, you know, disintegrate further and further. Whereas the K-Bar, because the pommel is actually pinned into the blade itself, the pommel isn't going anywhere. But here, I'll let you listen to this thing and how loose it got. One of the things I put my knives through as well is a chopping test. Now this isn't a very real world scenario. It's going to be very rare that you're actually going to be using a knife like this to chop through a piece of lumber. But it, it gives you an idea how just how durable these knives are. And as you can see the real K-Bar put a pretty good dent in this board so far. And I could have eventually chopped through the whole board. But the United Cutlery just didn't have the edge like I said nor did it really have the weight to really pack a punch. And the more I chopped, the more the handle just kept coming apart in my hand and it was so frustrating and I got so annoyed by it that I eventually just gave up. And like I said, as soon as that glued on pommel popped off, this knife just went downhill really quickly. So this is me picking up pieces of leather stacking and trying to figure out where they go. I'm just trying to salvage this knife and use it. You know, I could have, I guess, glued the pommel back on but, you know, in a survival situation, you're not going to have Gorilla Glue sitting around. And this just gives you a real life, you know, comparison. So you'll notice I ended up taking all the leather stacking off of the United Cutlery version. And uh, it does, I stand corrected, have a full rat tail tang. The only difference is you see where my pinky is here. There is a pin that runs into the real K-Bar and actually pins it, that pummel into the blade and holds that pummel on. So all the leather stacking doesn't back off of it and get loose over time. Whereas the United Cutlery version, it is not pinned on, nor does it run all the way to the full length of the pommel. It is stamped on the pommel to make it look like it does, but there is no pin that actually latches onto the blade. It's just a dab of glue on there and they expect that to hold. All right, well, welcome back. To close out this video, I wanna give some kind of closing remarks here about these two knives, these knives that we pitted against each other. We put these knives through the ringer, like I said, we threw them, uh, numerous times. We uh, drug them behind a golf cart for over a mile and a half and ground down a, a gravel road. We uh, did a chopping test. We drove over both of them with the car and by far, as is evident by the table here, a real K-Bar made in Olean, New York won the race. This is by far the superior knife. Other than some light cosmetic and surface distress, this knife is still as solid as when I took it out of the box, even after all of that abuse that I put it through. Whereas this knife, yeah, it does have some surface stuff, but it's actually completely disintegrated and the handle is completely inoperable at this point, mainly because this little 
pommel here was only glued on and it just popped off after the first couple throws into the tree. So the whole handle just kind of disintegrated in my hand. I wasn't able to hold it any longer. So this little hand guard here is very loose as well because this little, this little segment has actually slipped down and allowed it to loosen up quite a bit. But this blade is just, it didn't come with the same edge. This blade did. This thing is able to hold its edge so much better than this fake China version. But anyways, that's why I always say if you're buying a tool or some kind of piece of a survival gear, something like knives, always go with the most expensive version. I saw a lot of people on Amazon, they, um, they, they were going to buy, let's say, a real K-Bar knife, and they found this one for $27 or whatever it is, this, um, this United Cutlery version, and they bought it, and then they left the real K-Bar bad reviews. And I noticed that when I went to buy the real K-Bar, people were saying, oh, I bought this, but it's actually a rip-off. But it's just a lot of confusion going on Amazon, mainly because um, you know they, they can do whatever they want in China. They can put these real Eagle Globe and Anchor things all over their packaging and make it look like it's the real K-Bar, but it's not. So when you're going to buy the real K-Bar, make sure it is the real deal made in Oli in New York. And any knife you're gonna get for around 20 or $30, don't make it a knife that you're gonna think your you know your life can actually depend on or be a, a real heirloom knife. This knife right here is gonna be something that will be passed down from generation to generation in my family. And um, I would love for K-Bar to send me a new one since I basically just made a very long commercial for them. But I do want to tell you that I bought these knives with my own money. This is not a paid promotion whatsoever. So always go with the quality. This knife is four times the price, but it is. 10 times the knife. So I hope you guys liked this video. Thanks so much for watching this far. And I want to say thank you to all new subscribers and old subscribers. This would not be possible without you. If you like this content, please consider giving a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And let me know down in the comments below, maybe some knife ideas or some other gear you want me to torture test in our next video. I love hearing your feedback. So put that down in the comments below. If there's anything you want me to see, just, you know, you want to see me destroy or or, um, or do a versus video like we did here in this one. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell for notifications when I upload new content. Until next time, keep it real and we'll see you in the next video.